What's up guys? Welcome to day 78 of Onshape. With this being said, I'm going to put a pause or potentially just stop the pen altogether. Um, it was a project that kind of was turning into more of just a how-to video rather than teaching you how to do some new features or new things within Onshape. So I'm actually going to do that with remaking an automata. So notice in my part studio for this kind of practice one I did beforehand, my timeline for my part creation is really clean. We have seven sub-assemblies. We have 31 parts in total, but notice how many things show up in my timeline. We're able to clean up things when we're done with it, and I really like this. Also, my assembly was pretty easy to work with as well. Notice we only had a handful of mates to make rather than you know, connecting the 31 pieces that are in this right now. I'm also going to do a couple of things to show kind of good use of sketches. So we're going to use minimal number of sketches with maximum effort. This kind of takes good, smart, top-down design and uses it to its potential fullest, or at least the fullest I've seen so far. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new sketch. We're going to make a box and I'm going to draw two rectangles. So we hit R on our keyboard for rectangle, and I really like the center corner rectangle. I, 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 just, I just like it the most. So if you're not selected on center point and you're selected on a corner rectangle, I just like this one the most because it automatically constrains our rectangle to the origin. And that's what we're going to need to make our sketch fully constrained. We do know that our box has a wall thickness of a quarter inch. And our width is 4.5 inches and our height is four inches. Notice how my sketch is now fully constrained. This actually helps us in the long run when dealing with um, changing parts. So if we wanted to change the width of our box downstream, you know, we only have to change this dimension. Now, there is a couple things you could do here to go even further with parametric constraints. I'm not going to do that in this video. We will do that for the cams, but we're just going to save that for a later video. Notice how this didn't quite do what I needed it to do, so I'm going to go ahead and delete it. And we're going to draw a line. So instead of using line, let's use something new. And let's use extend. So extend is really cool because you can click on a line and extend it to somewhere else. I like it because it makes my job easier in making sure I don't accidentally, like I just did earlier, cause an issue. There we go. We're now still fully constrained. Everything looks good. We're going to go ahead and hit the green check mark and then start to roll. Now, when it comes to good design practices, we're going to extrude all four sides of our box and the back with one sketch. Let's do it. Instead of a one direction extrusion, we're going to do symmetric because that keeps my front plane in the center of my box. It actually helps us that if we were to use any of our origin planes, this helps us create our parts in planes that tend to be super helpful. You're going to notice I don't have to do very many offset planes in here just because I'm trying to match up or marry up as many sketches to my origin planes. So with that being said, let's do symmetric and let's do a total depth of four inches. Now, since it does do symmetric, notice that the number I put in four is two inches one direction, two inches the other. It's not four inches one, four inches the other. But in any case, we're gonna make the sketch one active again and we're gonna extrude symmetric and four inches again. We're gonna keep those as new parts but notice on how I'm actually going to change the name of this command. This extrusion I'm actually going to call side. We'll just call it box sides. And what that does for me is that notice in my timeline, I now have a command called box sides rather than just extrude. It's going to be a whole lot easier to find stuff if you name it as you make it. Maybe I want to make a t-shirt out of that. So let's call this box top and bottom. Let's go ahead and rename our sketch. Let's call box sketch. 
super easy to find. That way, in case I need to make a change, we can do so and find it pretty quickly. Now, let's do one last extrusion. We already have the profile here for our back. However, what we're going to do is we're going to do a depth of a quarter inch because it's a quarter inch thick piece. And we're also going to do an offset, so starting offset. And I believe this is going to be 1.75 inches. Nope, let's do two. There we go. Sometimes your working planes are a little bit off, and so you got to adjust a little bit. But we're going to go ahead and rename this as back, box back. And we can make our sketch, box sketch disappear as long as well as with our working planes. While you make parts, name them. I can't stress this enough, and give them a material, and give them a color. So we have five parts down here. We're gonna rename them. So we're gonna, this is gonna be, oh, let's see what that part is. Let's go bottom. So let's rename this. This is bottom, box bottom. Rename this, we'll call this box top. Rename this, we'll call this box right. Rename this, box left. And last, but surely not least, box back. Oh, if you spell back right, let's do that. B-A-C-K. Sweet, so we've named our parts. We're cleaning up our workspace as we go. So I'm gonna also highlight all of these and assign a material for it. Now we know our automata box is made out of MDF. So we highlight all of them, collect MDF. And now when we do a parts list way downstream, we don't have to come back. I can't tell you how much time that's gonna save. Okay, let's also edit appearance for these and make them kind of that MDF looking color. Sweet, this looks good so far. I'm gonna check my dimensions. We're four and a half wide. We are, click on top bottom. We are four tall and we are four deep. Sweet, this looks good to me. I now want to, before I move on, clean up my workspace. So notice how all of these commands that dealt with the box, we actually don't need anymore, at least right now. So I'm gonna highlight them all, right click, and add selection to folder. And we're gonna call this box sub assembly. And we just created our first folder for our first sub assembly, but now we actually have to make our first sub assembly. So we're gonna click on composite parts. We're gonna name this composite part box sub assembly. And we are going to select all of these pieces and then click okay. Now notice I didn't put my folder in here or my box sub assembly command in my folder so we can just drag and drop it in there. And there you go. We've finished our box. We signed it a material, we signed it a color, and made it a subassembly before moving on. I can't tell you or can't stress enough how much this is going to save your time downstream because everything is cleanly labeled. If we need to edit something later, we can find it super quickly. So with that being said, let's also go and rename this part studio, name everything. Let's call this box automata. YouTube day, I don't know, this is like 78, right? Through, I don't know, let's day 78 through 82, 82. Let's see how many days we make with it. If I need to change it, I'll go back and change it. But in any case, you guys are awesome. Stay awesome and stick around because I'm probably going to record the next video here soon and make this whole automata series showing all of my tips and tricks and things I've learned for making difficult parts and how to adjust them quickly. Like I said, you guys are awesome. Stay awesome. If you have any questions, feel free to throw them down in the comment section. Please like and subscribe. I can't tell you how awesome it is just to see the channel growing and people actually using the content I make, which is why I want to make good content. So it helps me if you throw down in the comment section what you'd like to see. Take care.